that's the fairly busy centre to Xu Jiahui, which is an area down in the southwest of Shanghai where I live. It's called Xu Jiahui because of a guy called Xu Guanxi, who was born in 1562 until 1633, and he was this kind of scholarly um, physicist who actually uh, dealt with Europeans quite a lot, uh, spoke to the Italians mainly, I think. What we've got here is a river that was covered over by the, the roadway and various old buildings. So we've got an old convent just you can see there. The cathedral is over there, I'll show you that later. And there's the old Jesuit library kind of linked to that, as well as the cathedral and various other historical sites, like a park that is dedicated to Xu uh, Guanxi. We've also got other things like many different shopping centers and the uh, Shanghai Film Museum in the local area as well. So here we have the largest statue here of the main man, Xu Guanxi. An information board which helps tell us all about him. This statue when I was first here was tilting at quite some angle. It had subsided into the ground due to its weight but they fixed it around about five or six years ago. What we have here is St Ignatius Cathedral or the Xu Jiahui Cathedral. I'll show you around inside there and also the library that's recently been added to the side. It was uh, built in 1906, or at least started, finished in 1910, and built by the Jesuits. It's uh, commonly thought to be, at least at the time, the largest cathedral in Asia. Uh, whether that is still the case, I'm not sure. Two spires were actually damaged during the Cultural Revolution, but they were restored some time later. This church was actually used in the Empire of the Sun by Steven Spielberg. However, it wasn't actually where the young Jim Graham went to school. He went to school in the Holy Trinity Church, which is much further towards the river on the Bund. to get everywhere but it's quite nice that they've at least opened up the church but we are outside again let's go over to the library the library acts as a good photograph place for the cathedral and it's got this relatively impressive central hallway and here is that view of the church This was also renovated recently. These ponds are relatively new. It used to be much more grass here. There is a lot of wedding photos that, of course, are done in front of the church. The library also has a number of magazines, and in fact, some are in English classics. So that's good for me. There is also this basement area as well, which is kind of like a shop cafe and they do activities so some painting going on. The library also links directly into the Xu Jiaohui metro station and there is the ubiquitous coffee shop as well just here. There's that super tall tower going up. I saw another YouTube video where somebody said that this is the Tibetan office in Shanghai. It is not. It's just simply a Tibetan styled topping of the Garden Marriott Hotel. That's all. So we have the church there, and if we go down a little side road next to it, what we have is the old Shanghai Meteorological Service there. Now, the building is there, the old building. The, the new offices are, are up there. Um, we can't get into it today. I'm sorry there's sun there, but we can't get into to it today because you need to actually book. I think it only is open on Mondays. That's what I've translated on there. You can see there's another info board there, 1872. And what happened with this building is that they would do the meteorological uh, survey and predictions and then send that information down to the Gutzlaff tower, I hope I'm saying that right, that's on the Bund, which would use semaphore to communicate to the ships you know, what the weather forecast was. Uh, and that's around about seven or so kilometers that way. So yeah, 
1872 you can see there's the tower there 1872 and it was kind of part of the uh, whole educational establishment uh, Jesuit setup there is what remains of the old convent it used to be a restaurant called ye old station and it's actually got a train in the garden um, it closed the restaurant business about six months ago which is a bit of a shame uh, and I don't know if it's reopening or if they're going to restore it I don't know what the, uh, the plans for that building are the old Jesuit library this wing is not possible to get into um, easily public access but this part we can we've got another one of the information boards which help us out so we can say the bibliotheca there and it was established in 1847 let's see if i can get in okay so yes flashing the card did help the area of the library that we cannot get to is through this way okay that's not publicly accessible at the moment but what we can do is have a little look at some of the books that are here and i'll show you them very briefly and there's a selection of books for example so there's an old railway book and just to show you the date it's back at 1907 we've got something on stamps there and then this is the china yearbook and there's several of those a very quick tour of the library here we are a little bit closer to the convent so as the info board says the former site the Virgin Mary convent built in 1843. There's entrance one of the metro. Here's a handy info board that's showing us where to get to the various places. There's the centre of Shujiawe. Here's the park. Uh, the river, I think, went down this way. Cathedral, biblioteca, the convent, uh, etc. Now, what we're going to do now uh, is go down to the Shujian Guanxi Park. Okay, so here's the statue, there's the park, okay, which is off down this way. Here is that Shu Guanxi Park. Look for the info board, here it is. So there you go. Oh, that's the rules built on the site of the private graveyard. So here we are here, and you can see there's a pond and uh, some pathways and various sculptures, and then there's his tomb at the very back something interesting is that they used to have fences all the way around all of the parks in shanghai and they've been trying to make them a little bit more you know, publicly available and accessible which is a nice thing there are these various statues here i think it's to do with possibly sweet potatoes he was known as a, a kind of uh, inventor of machines whether they were um, agricultural or also helping with the military this park is used for uh, music and dancing. I think we've got a, a troop here, if I can get through, enjoying the sun. Let's go and find another statue. And here's another one where he's got a little handheld telescope. So obviously something to do with uh, some astronomical uh, views. And he's got a very tired student here who's fallen asleep, but he's still gazing up at the sky. There is his actual tomb, and then there's another one which obviously is a much more military in nature there with a, a cannon and somebody viewing where the shot has gone, I guess. There's the tomb, and there's an info board. It is rare to see much uh, religious artefacts here in Shanghai, but obviously we have a, a large cross due to the Christian nature. Now also in the park is this tiny little museum to Xu Guanxi. Let's go and have a look at that. So you can see here are some notes about Xu Guanxi. Now that's Matteo Ricci, uh, who actually was a collaborator with Xu Guanxi. There you go, Xu Guanxi. And then Matteo Ricci. Sorry for the pronunciation on that. An old photo, 1934. That's the same stone article we've seen before. 300th anniversary of the death of Xu Guanxi. Uh, so some celebrations being done. There's maybe the burial mound and the church in the background. Again, down the side of the park, there used to be fences all the way along here, but they've opened that up. 
This is the Tutsawei Museum. Tutsawei is an old Shanghainese way of saying Xu Jiawei, I believe. It's on Pu Huitang Road. This basically shows you the history of the orphanage that used to be here, and it occupies three of the old buildings from that orphanage. Uh, and it was set up in around about the 1800s by uh, the Jesuits, I believe. I'll just show you around briefly inside. It is free to enter. Thank you very much. Okay, so you can see that we just can walk straight in. What we have in this first entrance is this marvellous wood carved entrance. I don't think it was actually used as an entrance. The orphanage here did a lot of printing and art and wood carving. So this is probably just an example of what it is that they were able to produce. Here we have a map of old Xu Chaowei. You can see there's the river there, there's the cathedral, the uh, meteorological center, the convent. I think we're in part of the uh, orphanage just here at the moment. <coughs> you can see the dates here. So from around about 1864 to about 1960, that's the various people that held office here. And then there's a model of the various uh, workshops. Here are various examples of the model. That was probably one of their test pieces. And they also did a lot of printing here. I, I guess it was basically a, a local printing press that the orphanage was able to provide as a service. Back via a large wooden carving. I won't go into it, but just to let you know it exists, we also have the Shanghai Film Museum here in the centre of Xuzhaohei. This is one of the main roads. This is Saoxilu. What we have here is a little advert board for the Xuzhaohei area. So there's inside the part of the library we couldn't get into. Uh, there's Xu Guanxi, a bit of the church. That's inside the meteorological building. Uh, and there you can see what's in uh, Tutsuei that we saw before. So. Um, that's got pretty much most of the buildings that I'm showing you. Hello. Hello. I have William helping me today. I know I've mentioned it before on why Xu Jiawei is called that because of Xu Guanxi. This board actually describes it the best. So you can see it talks about the rivers. It talks about Xu Guanxi, when he lived, the fact that he was involved in farming and academic writings. It then goes on to talk about the uh, international nature of him working with the West and the various sites that we've got here in Xuzhaohei. So pretty much everything that I'll cover in this video later, like the Bibliotheca, the Cathedral, and the Xuzhaohei Park, and the former site of the Pathé Records. There is a map, and what we have also here, this is the former site of the public school, is the way that it's listed there and on the map. And it's now Le Lycée Xuhui, so it's quite a famous and old building that's uh, now a different school. So this is interesting, it's the weekend, it's a Saturday, and we can actually get in to the school. This is quite rare, you wouldn't be able to do this during the uh, school time. Um, I don't know if they have it open every weekend, but here we go, we can get inside the building, have a little look around. Looks like it's basically the museum. Some of the corridors of the school look, there's a old setting. It looks like this is the main theatre. Yeah. It's the open school in the old building. There's a different view of that uh, school underneath those super talls, almost finished. And a slightly different view of the centre here. People always remember it because of this big glass ball. That's the central junction behind me and we're going to go on to the park which is about 300 metres that way. That's it William. Right and this is the park and this is actually a former chimney. I think the factories that they generally had here were rubber factories so they retained that, put a little spire on the top. The weather is pretty good so it's fairly busy today. There's the park. Usually there's some Terrapins are out. Yes, there they are. There you are a load on there. Are you coming for the water? I think he's coming for some food, William. Be careful. 
This is quite an interesting building architecturally. It's Hung Shang Cinema and it was opened in 1951. Unfortunately, it closed just pre-COVID and it never reopened again. So currently it's just, uh, just dormant. There's some talk about it being renovated, but uh, nothing yet. The red house is in the background, but it's a nice sunny day in the park. So of course we have some Tai Chi. William is getting an ice cream. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. There's the entrance. There's actually a record recording machine there as well. And here's the info board. And you can see here it says it was built in 1921. It was the Pathé Records office. And it was also the recording site of the March of the Volunteers. That's what makes it relevant for today. There is also a restaurant now in the ground floor and they have it done in all the old style. So here's some details of the architecture. There's an external view of the Red House and then over here we've got the plans so that this is the park. Uh, this is Avenue Pétain, which is now uh, Hong Shang Lu, and Zika Wei, which is now Zhao Jia Bang Lu. So this is where we are right now, which is the offices, and then there's a path through to the uh, the factory, basically, and so you can, which no longer exists. So you can see the press room, boiler house, plating shop, etc. And here's an old photo. And then a quick look inside the restaurant. There we go. Quite posh. Okay, William, let's go and find Mummy. I'm just going to have a quick look closer at... There you go, it kind of sits out here in the rain, but there's the record recording machine. It is a disc cutting lathe from the Newman Company, Germany. William found his Mummy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed some of the sites here in Xuzhou Hui. It's kind of worth looking around in your local area to find the, the social history. And uh, that's what I've done in Xuzhou Hui over the years. So you can see there's actually quite a lot here as regards religion, education, and then things like the recording villa, uh, the film studio, etc. Quite a lot in Xuzhou Hui. Come along and enjoy it. Bye.